Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Ultima 7 The Black Gate. In the last episode, we wrapped up in the town of Britain, and we made our way to Cove. And here at Cove, we discovered a lot of garbage around town. Uh, the lake is filthy. Uh, we also uh, discovered the Shrine of Compassion. So it's time for us to head into Cove proper, and we take a look at our Cove map. You can see it's a pretty small town. Not a lot going on here. Uh, so let's head into Cove and check it out. Shall we? Uh, it is daytime, right? Early morning, so we won't have to worry about sleeping. I want to look out. I Somebody was, I was looking around, and I saw a thing that there are corpses around the lake we'll want to pay attention to. So we want to make sure we do that here. So first thing is, we have a pretty big building here on the left. I'm going to open up this can of refreshing cream soda. So my throat doesn't give out on me. When do we eat? Good sir, we eat right now. Shamino, we can eat whenever. We have so much food. There you go, Shamino. Alright, so we have this very large building the emerald I'm wondering if this is an inn oh hey that's a very that's a very cool looking guy this flamboyant bard exudes a festive aura I have sung about thee in many a song and here thou art in the flesh I recognize thee immediately the man bows welcome avatar who are you I am Day Maria the bard what's your job I spin tales and sing songs. I also know a good deal about the folks in Cove. What kind of tale? What if I combine all three? So I sing a song which is a tale about the people of Cove? Sure. Now, I don't know that I'll be able to sing this here. Very well, then. I shall tell you the story of the only unhappy person in Cove, Nastasia. She's the only person in town without a lover. She's the one who's in charge of the Shrine of Compassion. Look at that. Not that she does not have suitors. She's quite beautiful. All she thinks about is the Shrine of Compassion, which is where thou wouldst probably find her at this moment. De Maria strums his lute and sings. There once was a maid, Ariana, who held the shrine so dear. She asked that her offspring do likewise and keep it so year after year. Her son, Mikhail, became mayor with a goal to keep in fashion. The town's old beloved reputation as the city of love and passion. Mikhail's oldest child was Magda. She built Lover's Walk, a fine park, where coves lovers both young and old could court outdoors in the dark. Ah, but the clouds of misfortune do hide, where the sun's brightness seemeth most fair, and poor Nadia Magda's daughter of misfortune had more than her share. This is a terrible song. It began when Nadia did wed one day to Julius, a not-so-wealthy young lad. He left her with child and went far away, and for Nadia's poor heart t'was sad. One day from you the fateful news came that Julius by a beast was killed. The child came early, t'was a difficult birth, and Nadia's soul became chilled. With dagger and hand and child and arm to the shrine did Nadia run. She plunged a dagger into her own breast. Never again would she see the sun. Wow, this is a dark song. Nastasia grew up an orphan, you see, unloved and unwanted by all. Today she was cloaked in solitude, awaiting her destiny's call. And that is poor Nastasia's tale. Perhaps thou couldst cheer her. Find her, I beseech thee. Okay. That was not a song, the last part. Well. Um... Let's ask about folks. Oh no. No, we're good. No. You've told us enough, good sir. We need hear no more. Ooh. Alright, we got a... The local tavern, it appears. Again, it's easier to get to the people if we just pause it by hitting our, in, our status button. This beautiful, earthy woman in her 40s gives you a friendly smile. What's your name? I am Zenadia, she says with a curtsy. What's your job? I'm the owner and manager of the Emerald. Please come to the pub when it is open and I shall be happy to serve they. Um, oh, 
Apparently, we're too early. The pub must be closed during the day. Well, let's check out the kitchen here. Uh, we got, what here? Just a bottle of some kind of booze. A table. Garbage. Anything inside the stove? No, you can't click inside the stove. Well, that's probably for the best. Uh, let's see. If she's in the other room, she can't see us. Rob this room! Oh, don't tell me there's nothing to rob over here. There's some wine in a bucket. There are some kitchen items. Ooh. Aw, oh, ma'am. Why does your home have no valuables in it, lady? We came here for your valuables, and there's nothing. There is a book. My Cup Runneth Over by Mosaine. This illustrious volume holds many detailed instructions for neophyte vintners. The book even includes tips on selecting choice. Ah, no, we've read this. This is the book about making wine. Anything in any of these drawers that we even want to bother trying to take? Oh, just some dresses and junk. Uh, the Art of What the Eats. In these pages you will find the comparative analysis of many of the things. Ah, it's the book about what to eat. We read that already. And we found out that meats are the best. And anything that's not meat doesn't matter. So I guess this must be open in the night time. Ooh, what's this weird open building? Oh, it's a well. Can I use the bucket on the well? Oh, this is this game is so good. I literally have a bucket of water. I just drank a bucket of water. Oh, this game is the best. Okay. So many little details like that. Alright, we've got a little... Ooh, what's that? Is that just corn? Nope, garbage. Uh, nobody home here. Don't know whose house this is. They do have pants and clothes. Like you would expect to see in a house. Uh, table... Man, there's not much here to take. The people of this town are as poor as the people in Paws, it would appear. What was that? Oh, somebody's opening windows. Ah! I see blood, which means I see corpses. Is that a corpse? Blood? Blood? Aha! All kinds of stuff. Who is hungry now? Spark and Sentry. The hungriest people I've ever met. Uh, let's see, what else is around here? Some mushrooms? Can't take the mushrooms. Uh, is this a body? It is! Oh, it's a kitty. Oh, there's another body inside his stomach. Aha! A ring of regeneration. Uh, we'll give that to... Well, the avatar can't carry... How is the avatar not able to carry anything anymore? Really? I'm here. We'll put it in this... Oh, no, that's our plot items. Oh, what have I done? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, this is cheese. That goes to food people. You guys figure that out later. Let's put a magic ring in the sack of magic. If it'll fit. There we go. That'll work. Well, that was worth looking for the bodies. Keep an eye out for more blood. Seems to be a bunch of other garbage around here. A diaper? Why would you want a diaper? Forget that, it's disgusting. Ugh. I'd really like to find that key, though. Look at all this gar- Oh, the garbage just gets worse. Oh, the garbage around this lake is terrible. Alright. Got kind of a long house here. Somebody opening and closing windows over and over again. What's going on in here? Who do we have here? Who are you? Hello. Hello, good sir. You startle a fighter who seems lost in thought. His dog seemed to be meditating as well. 
What's your name? I am Raybert. Ooh, hi, Raybert. He turns to the dog, and this is Regal. What's your job? I am a trainer. I specialize in a style of combat that relies on concentration and meditation. It shall boost thy dexterity and intelligence, as well as thy combat skill. Ah, I don't want to train, but what help me about meditation? Most of all, combat occurs in the mind, before the first blow is ever struck. The key to victory is to first win the inner battle in the mind. Winning that inner battle is what I help my students to learn. Uh, so, Regal? He's an exceptionally smart animal. He understands the meditative way of life. Raybert throws the dog a cookie, which it snarfed up in the blink of an eye. He is cute too, Raybert says with complete seriousness. Ah, uh, well we have a trainer here. Um, for combat and dex, which is fine. Uh, a couple books. Trainer's Workout, we've read that before. Bloody Blades and Books and Beauties, we've read. The Scent of Valor. Herein can be found the definitive word on chivalry and the duties to a knight's liege. Uh, land ships. Not only does this extensive tome describe the many riding beasts in Britannia, but also discusses riding styles and techniques. In addition, it addresses the reasons for the popularity of carts, explaining why so few people choose to continue riding horses. The final chapter covers flying carpets, and how they will ultimately replace all non-magical means of travel. Flying carpets! Oh! Outpost. Twixt the covers of this volume is an invaluable reading for all soldiers. This manual details the tactics and strategies of siege warfare from the point of view of the attacker and defender. And remember, a soldier's best line of active defense is the cannon. After thy comrades have already loaded the cannon, simply aim the cannon at thy target and fire away. Uh, what do we have here? You know, I've been thinking. Wasn't Shamino a dual wielder in previous games? Wasn't that what he did? Oh, he's carrying cheese in his hand. Really? Put that in the food bag. Along with this... Oh, the carrots won't fit. How embarrassing. So Shamino is all kinds of decked out. We'll pick up a, an offhand dagger somewhere else then. Later on, maybe when we've figured out our inventory a bit better. Or we can carry more. Can you, uh... Nope. I wonder if you could click on the dummy and do anything. Alright, other side here. Where's he going? Oh, just out to look through the window. Fancy house here. Ah! Oh yeah, wasn't there that mage we were supposed to talk to that went crazy? The elderly mage looks older and more senile than when you last saw him. Oh yeah, he taught us spells in the last in the, uh, the previous Ultima games. I remember him. What's your name? That I know. My name is Rudyam. What's your job? I am not sure anymore. I was a powerful mage at one time. Now nothing works. Magic is a foul. I suppose I could sell these some reagents and spells without us want. And mind the carpet, it does not work. <laughs> what do you mean your carpet doesn't work? The big blue carpet is a flying carpet. It does not work like it should. Radium looks around and scratches his head. Funny, it was here a while ago. Oh, I remember now. Some adventurers borrowed my flying carpet a few weeks ago. When they returned, they said they had lost it near Serpent's Spine, somewhere in the vicinity of the Lost River. I suppose if thou didst want to go and find it, thou couldst keep it. It did not work very well. Perhaps thou canst make it work. I did not like the color. Anyway, huh. Um, all right, well, first of all, uh, let's ask about the moon gates not working. They are a nuisance, are they not? I do believe that black rock is the solution to the problem. I wish my mind had not lost me, or I could continue my work. Tell me about black rock. Do not mention that foul mineral's name to me. It has caused me much frustration. Before my mind lost me, I was conducting experiments with the internal infernal material. Probably all this stuff. But now I cannot for the life of me remember what it was I was trying to do. What kind of experiments? I wrote them all down in my notebook, which is somewhere around here. Thou art welcome to look at it, but stay away from that damn transmuter. Tis dangerous. Alright, what's the transmuter do? 
tis that wand-like thing. It was supposed to magnetize and magically transmute black rock, but it doth not work correctly. Try pointing at a piece of black rock, and thou wilt see what I mean. But do not stand too close. Thou art welcome to take it if thou dost want a piece of garbage. Well, we'll probably take that, I, I bet. Um, so where's your notebook? It used to re I used it to record my experiments, but black rock and the black rock transmuter. All right. What's wrong with magic? I do not understand what is wrong. My magic does not work so well anymore. Okay. What spells can you sell us? Does thou wish to buy some spells? Yes. And which circle does thou wish to study? Uh, let's check the first. Which spell? Light, awaken all, detect trap, cure, we already have. Um, what I would really like to find are the mark and recall spells. Second. Destroy, trap, fire blast, great light, telekinesis. No, thank you. How about... Third circle. Curse, heal, paralyze, poison. No. Let's check the fourth circle. Ah, mark and recall. There we go. Mark. 85 gold. Agreeable? Yes. Done. Yes. Fourth circle. Recall. Yes! Done! That's what I wanted. Alright, what reagents does he sell? He sells... Ginseng, Blood Moss, Sulfurous Ash, Magic Root, and Black Pearl. Alright, nothing for now. So we got two very important spells here. We got Mark and Recall, which will allow us... to mark the stones that we have. Can we cast them? Yes, we can. Um, I wish I could click here. I wish it would tell me what it uses as far as reagents. Uh, no. I cast the spell on nothing and wasted a bunch of reagents. That was terrible. Hey, he's moving all these potions around. Alright, so here inside his home, what does he have? He's got a back room where his bedroom is. He's got a parrot. Uh, I know where the treasure is. Squark. I know where the treasure is. Well, tell me where the treasure is, you stupid bird. Pretty bird. The treasure is. Hey, Spark, don't talk to the bird. Don't talk to the bird, Spark. In here, what do we have? We've got a crystal ball. Go away. Apparently the crystal ball doesn't want to be dealt with. We have a kite, a spindle of thread. This is probably black rock, right? Yep. He's got a chest over here with leather armor and pants. We're good on that. Here we have Runjim's wand. That must be the transmuter. What else is on this table? Is this garbage? More garbage. Just garbage everywhere. All right, here's his journal. Observations of Black Rock by Rudgum the Mage. The mysterious substance known as Black Rock is completely indestructible. Only by magical means can it be modeled and shaped. Black Rock can be found in small quantities beneath the ground, sometimes near loads of iron ore or lead. Black Rock can be excavated by conventional means, but melting it down into a malleable substance is impossible, except by magic. I found that a combination of electrical energy and magnetic energy has a profound effect upon the substance. Together, these properties cause black rock to become permeable. That is, one can put one's hand through the substance as if it were water. Further study reveals that black rock might work as a teleportation device. If magic electrical energy, magnetic energy, and the correct alignment of heavenly bodies act together upon the substance, this theory still needs to be tested. The black rock transmitter I created out of an old wand does not work. It was meant to shoot electrical and magnetic charges into black rock, but all it does is make the substance explode. I must be careful not to let the transmitter get into the wrong hands. Pointing it at a large quantity of black rock might produce a devastating explosion. I must quit for the day. The headaches that have been plaguing me have gotten worse. I am forgetting more and more. 
Very soon, I am afraid, I will get how to cast simple spells. I believe something might be affecting the magical ether, but I cannot be sure. Well, so this is his wand. We're going to take this wand, and I feel like it's going to be important. Since the Black Gate, I think, is made out of Black Rock. The titular Black Gate of the game. So let's put this in our important items bag. No, I don't want to move the table. I want the wand. We'll put the wand here in our important items bag that the uh, Avatar has. But I don't want to blow up any Black Rock, so we'll, we won't do that right now. I really wish I could get all these... If he was in a different room... Hey, look! He's reading a book called Why Black Mages Like... Why Good Mages Like Black Magic. Despite the rather frivolous title, this complete tome explains the value of applying magic for the benefit of society, as opposed to selfish personal gains. The concept presented herein meshed quite well with those examples by the virtues. There's a lot of books here, actually. That's the same book. The Transitive Vampire. This richly detailed tome is a handbook of grammar for the innocent, the eager, and the doomed. Ribald Encounters, within the pages of this anthology are many stories full of suggestive prose. How the West Was, this tome of history, tracks the, tracks the geography of Britannia from the early centuries to more recent times. The included maps provide a level of detail never before seen in a work of this nature. In addition, the short chapter on the once important virtues reveals their sources from the broader tenets of truth, love, and courage. Well, that's good. I Am Not a Dragon by Thompson. Within these pages is a bounty tale of Barnard, fictional Lord of Serpents Hold. This volume is part one of a great trilogy involving the humorous exploits of the Lord and his fellow knights. Out of the way, I'm trying to read your books. How to Conquer the World in Three Easy Steps by Maximilian the Amazingly Mean. Found within the ravings of a deranged megalomaniac cleric describing his plans for the domination of Britannia, and after I have acquired the Voss Corpse spell, there will be no one to deny to defy me. For all will fear my casting of the spell, even the Loth Lord British himself will offer his obeisance to me. I cannot read today. I'm sorry, folks. What's this? Oh, this is a lamp. Okay. This guy has a lot of books. Dolphin in the Dunes. Contained within the pages of this book, what seems to be an allegory for human familial relations. The work is obviously fiction, but the undertone suggests extensive study of humans part. Halfway through the work, the point of view shifts, permitting the reader to see multiple sides of each issue. Modern Necromancy, the author of this poetic treatise, attempts to show how necromancy has been maligned throughout the years, and explains the beneficial knowledge that can be garnered by studying the effects of magic on a lifeless corpse including the more recent art of returning life to Dead Companion, known as Resurrection. The Day It Didn't Work This collection of essays details the difficulty in overseeing a group of well-meaning misfits in a mechanical environment, especially when the overseer is a misfit as well! Ah. No One Leaves The sequel to The Day It Didn't Work This short tome offers insight to why new mechanical contraptions don't always function at the time agreed upon between mechan mechanation and overseer, despite how constructed they may appear. In addition, the work discusses how to handle presenting the complaints of the tinkers who worked on them and how to persuade them to finish the work regardless of how tired they are, how late in the evening it is. That's pretty good. Uh, down below, a couple more books. Ring World by Larry Niven. What? What? Herein lies the words that tell the adventures to be had in the space between Britannia and the heavens. The work, all the fictional, prepared, proposes that there are many undiscovered lands that lie between Britannia and other suns. Ah, the Ringworld books exist in Britannia. The Dragon Compendium. Found almost exclusively in the Dungeon Death Star, dragons are an ancient race of large reptiles. They possess great intelligence, and a few also use magic sometimes summoning other creatures to fight with, or for them in battle. However, in combat they are quite formidable without any aid. For in addition to their sharp claws and the rows of razor-like teeth that fill their maws, they are capable of producing large clouds of fiery death that, combined with their ability to become invisible, makes them more than a match for any foolish enough to cross them. Should one ever be found that is willing to bargain with thee, I strongly suggest doing so. 
for very few can survive a battle with one of these terrible lizards, and even fewer can emerge victorious. Well, we may have to come back here at night and do some thieving. Uh, let's see here. Got another little home. Ah, just a... Oh! What do we got? Close, close, close. An apple. There you go, Spark have an apple. Hero Fertilizer. A warrior's handbook depicting several esoteric fighting styles. Each step is accompanied by a short piece of fiction, permitting the reader better visual visualization of the detailed style. Uh, some rolls. Everyone's got rolls in their bed drawers. It's very concerning. What is this? A glass item. Weird. When starts the adventure? Herein can be found a novel relating the travels of a fledgling warrior. Struggling to gain skill and respect in a treacherous world. As the warrior gains experience in dealing with opposition, he begins to notice how well the land is balanced in ideology. For every evil, there seems to be a good, and vice versa. No time to dance. The wonderful depiction of the busy life of two industrious scholars caught betwixt the demands of a forceful taskmaster and the pressure of time. Oh, lots of book reading going on here in the Cove. We have... Town Hall. Anybody in the Town Hall? Again, we're supposed to talk to the mayor about the pollution bill. There he is. Let's do a save. You know, I never looked up how to quick save. I really wish I had. But I haven't, because I'm too cool for school. Ooh, what's on this on the desk? Well, that's just a bookmark. What's this red thing? Sealing wax, okay. And we're going to read all your books first. The Summer of My Satisfaction by Plexus. The story within this novel relates the tale of Good King Kettle, who rules a great land without any troubles. How about Collected Plays? Ah, we've seen this before. Uh, we already looked at that. The Right Stuff. Within the pages is found a treatise on the value of literacy and proper writing skills. The first few chapters briefly discuss the various elements of good literature. The subsequent text analyzes the qualities of the elements to determine why they are in typical to quality literature. The essay ends with a description of the process by which a promising writer can apply what has been learned to construct better prose. Ah, Map of Britannia. Ah, Broomer's Britannia. Twixt the covers of this atlas is detailed description of the entire continent of Britannia and the nearby islands. Good for it. One more book. Milord Conduct. Found within is a description of the proper behavior for courtiers and courted individuals. The book reveals many different techniques for both polite and impolite seduction. Mr. Mayor, we must talk. This regal gentleman epitomizes a well-known, a well-liked politician. Hello, Lord British sent word that you might come to visit us. Welcome to Cove, Avatar. What's your name? I am Lord Heather, and I recognize the Avatar. What's your job? I am the town mayor of Cove, home of the Shrine of Compassion. What about Nastasia? I do hope thou canst help her. She needs a man like thee to bring her out of her depression. Well, that's kind of scary. Um, tell me about Cove. It's a small place, I know. Many of our residents have moved away to the larger towns, especially Britain. But we have maintained a small core of loyal Covites. Uh, tell me about the shrine. We are proud of our shrine. One of our residents takes good care of it. Thou must try and visit the shrine if thou hast not already. Tis a monument to all lovers in this town. Uh, tell me about the lake. It has gotten so putrid that on hot summer days the stink is suffocating. I believe that the Britannian Mining Company in Minoc is the source of the problem. Mining waste is being deposited in the lake. Thou shouldst be glad it is nearly winter. Um, tell me about lovers. Britain may be the city of compassion, but Cove has become the city of passion. Everyone here seems to fall in love rather easily. Thou wilt find that everyone loves someone. Almost everyone, that is. What do you mean by almost everyone? Except for Nastasia. Well, we knew that. What do you mean by everyone? Well, let's see. 
I am in love with Jaina, our healer. Jaina? Jaina's here? What? And she is in love with me, of course. Then there is Zanadi, who runs the Emerald. She has interest in Demaria, our local bard, and vice versa. Raybert, our trainer, is courting Pamela, the innkeeper. Sounds like bad theater to me. Any wenches my own age around here? Oh, Spark, you saucy boy. Um, t I have a bill for you, buddy. Tis about time that the government did something about the awful stench coming from the lake. I shall be happy to sign thy bill of law. Take it back to the Great Council post-haste. Lord Heather signs the bill and hands it back to you. All right. Um, yes, and then Nastasia again. Goodbye. Jaina is the healer? Jaina is in, like... Oh, Grug has to eat. Jaina is in, like, our Jaina the Druid? Or was she a Druid or Mage? I can't remember now. But this is Jaina we're talking about. Right? Got some injured people. Hello! You are surprised to see your old companion Jaina, looking only slightly aged since your last visit. What's your name? Why well, I am Jaina. Thou shouldst remember me. Tell me about Lord Heather. Wait, tell me about your job. I have been the Cove Healer for some time now and can provide thee with my healing services, since magic is not reliable. I have been yearning to join a party of adventures such as mine old friends. I miss the old life. Oh, we're going to get there. Uh, Lord Heather. Jaina blushes. Yes, I have been seeing our town mayor for some time now. There you go. Tell me about magic. My magic has been affected by something in the air, but I have found that my senses are still with me. Hast thou noticed that the mages, mages in the land are affected in the head? It is most disconcerting. Nevertheless, I can manage to cast a spell or two most of the time. What about your friends? Our old friends, Yolo, Shamino, and Dupre, the men who conquer evil in the name of Lord British. Well, Shamino's... We got Yolo. He looks the same to me. Perhaps he has a little more waistline than before. That is to be expected if one stays away from adventuring for too long. What does thou mean, little more waistline indeed? No offense indeed, Yolo. How about Shamino? Shamino, thou dost not look like a kid anymore. What does happen? Didst thou reach the venerable age of 30? Humph, I'm still a kid at heart. That is a relief, she grins cheekily. And Dupre. I miss having a drink or two with that rogue. Let's go find that knight. We should. Uh, tell me about Lord British. I have not seen our liege in many years. Well, how about you join us? I would be honored to join thee, my lord. All right. Jane is in the party. Woo! Jaina is poorly equipped. Oh, she has a bag instead of a backpack? She has a hawk with her? She just has a hawk. She just brings the hawk along. Your money goes to, uh, Sentry. He's in charge of our cash. Oh, it probably put it in his... In a bag somewhere. Who knows? Who knows where that money went? You have an apple? To Shimino. Your hawk, however, you will keep with you. I don't know what the hawk does. We need to get you a real backpack, though, instead of this little pouch. Well, and we need to get you a real weapon instead of just a... Is that just a dagger you have? Oh, yeah. We need to get you a new dagger. Well, while we're here, let's, uh, here. Since you own these potions, we're not going to take the bandages. I don't care about those bandages. But we got Jaina! Our party is getting bigger and awesomer. We're just going to leave all these sick people on tree to just... Leave him here in the hospital without a doctor. Because that's the way we roll. Oh, hey, you know what's going to be handy, though? Didn't we see... Um, what is this? Uh, ooh, this is the inn. Okay. Who stayed here? Tyrus of Britain, Caelan of Buccaneer's Den, Sir Dupre has been here, Wantok of Trinsic, and Uberic of Minoc. You see a friendly woman in her thirties. What's your name? I am Pamela. What's your job? I am the innkeeper at the Out and Inn. If thou wouldst like a room, just say so. Um, tell me about Raybert. Ooh, he is such a wonderful man. So not think he's so intense and serious. Handsome too. Oh, and I like Regal as well. That's his dog. 
Regal, as far as dogs go, he is handsome too. Um, tell me about the Out and In. Well, Cove is the city of love and passion. Dost thou not know? Thou must be careful if thou dost stay too long in Cove. Thou wilt fall in love with someone. Mark my words. Um, okay, so we have the shop here. Uh, we could probably... There's nothing in these rooms worth getting. Uh, we have what looks like the... Ooh, the lover's suite. Look at that. I don't like that the, the inn... That the joke is the sex joke about the inn. I mean, it's the in and out. The old in and out, if you get it. Um, I want to head back over here because there was that little house. Was it over here we saw? Um, nope. Somewhere there was an extra set of armor we're going to give to Jaina so that she's got some armor. Where, where did we see that? It wasn't here in the mage's house. It was not here in the mage's house. Is there anything? Oh, it was in his house. That's right. We'll go there in a sec. Just want to look up here. Make sure we're not missing anything. Oh, where does this go? Oh. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, goodness. Literally scared the holy junk out of me there. Holy moly. <laughs> I was not ready for a fight. <laughs> we gotta be ready for monsters in the future. We did get 20 gold off of him though, with these gold nuggets. But oh my goodness. Did not expect to get attacked by a monster. Woo! Um, we're gonna head down here. Uh, because we need to equip Jaina a little bit. In fact, Jaina, if this guy will leave, let's try and save before we do this, just in case. Um, oh, her hawk. Oh, she uses her hawk as a weapon. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, put this over there. All right. Well, never mind. I was going to. Can we? Can she equip a secondary weapon? Yes. So she can have a dagger and her hawk. We're going to leave her hawk equipped. That's pretty cool. I was going to give her this sword, but we're going to give her her hawk, and we don't need to carry an extra dagger. That's just extra weight. Um, Jaina, you are going to become my potion person because right at this moment in time, that is. Yo, uh, YOLO. So we're gonna... You're, oh, I can't fit that in... You have to get... We need a backpack for Jaina. Alright, so... We know where there's a backpack at. There is one chilling out back in, um... On the floor in Britain uh, at the Provisioners because we left it there. So, oh, look, she her hawks on her arm and everything. That is so cool! She uses a hawk as... That's neat that she uses a... I'm just... That's cool. I like it. A little touch. I like a lot. Woo. Well, when we're not getting scared to death, we can use that hawk to fight things. So we're going to head back to Britain with our sign thing from Cove. We also got the magic wand from this guy. We've learned that my knock is really going to be the next place we have to go. Um... We have the wand we can use on Blackrock, but my knock is really going to be our next long-term location. So next episode, though, we will head back to the beautiful land of Britain. We'll turn in the bill that we have signed, and we'll go ahead and get a backpack for Jaina, and I'll do a little more inventory stuff off-screen. Until then, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Please tell your friends. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we hope to see you soon.